As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My com command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Indeed, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Tony, thank you very much. Uh, do keep that passage open, please. And, and it's not really a, a sermon outline, but do have a look at page nine, please. I'm going to be referring to that. Let me pray for us. Father, um, thank you that you are a speaking God and that you speak to change your people. Grow us, we pray, in love. And help us to understand more of Jesus and how he came. We ask in, in his name, please. Amen. 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 Out of ammunition and running out of time, Flying Officer Percy Burton, whose photo is on page 9 in our order of service, had to make a decision that only really occurs in times of conflict. The question, however, is should he have been awarded the Victoria Cross for the decision that he made? Percival Burton was born in Cape Province in South Africa, but found his way, like so many of the brightest and best, to Oxford University, where he read law. He was, by all accounts, an able student, uh, he enjoyed himself there and was reserve cox for the university boat. Significantly for our story, it was there that he learned to fly as part of the university air squadron. A month after the outbreak of war, he was called up into the Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve. And he had been flying hurricanes for about a month when the Battle of Britain started in July 1940. He had been operational for 10 weeks when on the 27th of September 1940, a force of 15 JU-88 bombers, accompanied by 24 Messerschmitt 110 fighter aircraft, flew across the channel to attack London along with 11 other pilots from RAF North Weald, Percy Burton was scrambled in his hurricane as part of a much larger force from across the southeast to intercept these raiders. This larger defensive force soon broke up the German attacking formation and a series of individual dogfights developed in the skies above Sussex and Kent. The Luftwaffe pilots ran for the safety of the channel and for their airfields in France. Percy was pursuing his opponent across the hedges and fields of Sussex. It's reported by a young boy who was a home guard messenger. Uh, he recalled the furious chatter of machine guns as Percy Burton engaged his target above Mayfield. By the time the town of Hailsham came into view, Percy had been fighting for 40 minutes and his guns were empty. The Messerschmitt swept over the town from the north. Eyewitnesses described them as being no higher than the height of the church tower. Burton swung his aircraft away from the German and then banked hard 
as if to pass underneath his opponent. At the last minute, he flicked his, oh, let me get this right. He flicked his port wing upward and clipped the tail section of the 110. The effect was to sever the whole tail section from the rest of the plane, and both sections of the enemy aircraft fell to earth, the front section bursting into flames. The very tip of the hurricane, at the tip of the wing of the hurricane, also came away, and it crashed into a large oak tree that still stands on New Barn Farm in the south of the town. Percy Burton's body was found 20 or 30 yards from that tree, dead in a ditch, as were the two German pilots. The people of our town hailed Burton as a hero. His unquestionable gallantry was widely praised. The head of 11 Fighter Group, Air Vice Marshal Keith Parks, wrote, I have recommended this pilot for a posthumous decoration and I very much hope that it, this will be awarded in due course. But it never was. History tells us that Percy Burton was mentioned in dispatches, but nothing more. His actions are widely considered today to have been of the very highest gallantry and deserving of the Victoria Cross the British and Commonwealth's highest gallantry medal. Debate still rages as to why he was not awarded it. Uh, Lord Ashcroft, uh, who has the largest collection of privately owned Victoria Crosses, uh, states that he has long ago concluded that the way in which Victoria Crosses were awarded is an imperfect science. He puts it like this, I like this. While everyone who is awarded a Victoria Cross is a hero, not every hero is awarded the Victoria Cross. I wonder if you've ever considered, that's the, that's the second picture on page nine, I wonder if you've ever considered why the Victoria Cross is so named. Obviously Queen Victoria is the obvious bit, but why, why a cross? Why not the Victoria Medal? The answer is, of course, that the cross is the symbol of sacrifice. The cross is what Jesus is speaking about on the night before he dies when he says to his friends, greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Sacrifice. That's one of the reasons why we're here today, to remember the sacrifice of those who died in war and those especially from the Royal Air Force who have in different places and at different times given their tomorrows for our today. The cross that Jesus was referring to was a Roman instrument of torture. It was designed to very slowly kill the scum of the Roman Empire. It wasn't particularly unusual. Uh, people were hung on crosses all over uh, the Roman Empire, but it was horrific. In fact, it was such a, a terrible way to die that Roman citizens, no matter what they had done, could never be crucified. They were exempt because of their citizenship. The cross is a symbol of sacrifice. So it makes sense that our most prestigious awards for gallantry are crosses. Jesus makes clear that his own death on a cross was no terrible accident. It wasn't a misunderstanding. He chose to die that those who are his friends might live. I don't know and I don't think history records whether uh, Percy Burton knew anyone who lived in Hailsham. It's probably not fair to say that he died so that the people of Hailsham might live. But that is exactly what Jesus is saying when he says, greater love has no man than this, 
that he lay down his life for his friends. Jesus knew what was coming and he chose it. He chose it because he loved all those who would become his friends. And the reason Jesus chose the cross was because he knew we were in terrible danger. This is a rather clumsy illustration, so you'll have to forgive me, I'm afraid. Um, But we have not lived with God as our commanding officer. My dad was in the army for uh, 13 years, uh, and he says, um, you follow orders because you don't see the whole plan. Uh, You're part of a much bigger operation, uh, and your orders are just to do your bit. And if you don't, if you don't fulfill your orders, others might die because of that. I don't think it's it's good only to think of God as our commanding officer, but we have all lived without reference to what he says. We have all ignored his orders, if you like, for our lives. And that has consequences. Let me take just one of his commands. Uh, let Let me phrase it as a question. Have you always, at all times, loved those you live amongst? Your family? Your friends, the people who live next door to you, have you always loved them as much as you love yourself? Of course you haven't. Of course you haven't, and neither have I. We love ourselves very, very much, and we love people who we like a bit, and there are some people who we don't like, and we don't love them at all. (laughs) And when we do that, we disobey God. Because the the stakes are so high, discipline is key to our armed forces. If you step out of line, you're punished. That's that's the the right and proper thing for an organization where lives hang in the balance. Well, that's true for us as well. God is in charge. If we break his commands, we break his laws, if we fail to obey his orders, then we're punished. Unless, unless Jesus wonderfully steps in and takes the punishment for us. And that's what Jesus is doing on the cross. He is sacrificing himself. He is laying down his life for his friends. His death pays the punishment for everyone who comes to him, everyone who says, Jesus, I want you to be my friend. I want your death to count in my place. To them, Jesus says, I love you. You are my friend, and for you I lay down my life. The Victoria Cross is a a very special award. It recognizes a very special kind of bravery. Uh, There have only been 15 awarded since the end of the Second World War. If you look at someone wearing that medal, you can be in no doubt that you are in the presence of someone with unusual courage. Dare I say, someone like Percy Burton. For the Christian, the cross is special because it speaks of a special kind of love. Not a, not a fluffy, huggy, lovey, bunny kind of love. A love that acts. A love that suffers. A love that serves. If you're a Christian, you can look at the cross and know you are loved. Flying Officer Percy Burton was brave. It isn't my call, but you'll be unsurprised to know that I think his actions on that September day warrants the Victoria Cross. The people of Hailsham thought he was brave, and his name is remembered in the name of one of the streets in our town. A couple from our church family live there. Uh, But here is the thing. I never knew about him. I had no idea about him. I have even visited Hannah and Emmanuel in their home not realizing I was walking down a a street named 
after this brave man. I was totally ignorant of who he was and what he'd done. <coughs> Don't make the same mistake with Jesus. You'll have heard his name. You'll probably know a bit about his birth. But don't miss out on the truth that those who are friends with him, his death changes everything for them. Don't be ignorant about who he was and what he's done. The simplest way is to read a biography of his life. We've got four of them. Uh, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're at the back. Uh, they look a bit like this. Please take one home. Take one home and read it. Make sure you know about the sacrifice of Jesus and the difference his death makes. Make sure you're clear on who he is and make sure your response to him is the right one. Jesus said, greater love hath no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you that all those who put their trust in you can call you friend and can know that their sins are fully and finally paid for by your death on the cross. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.